Hello, welcome to another video. This time we're looking at um, a difficult example. Uh, it's labeled as example number six in this series of lectures on integration by parts. And we're trying to find the antiderivative of the arctan of one over x. And it's um, a definite integral. We're trying to find it from one to root three. Okay, and um, like in a previous video, when there's only one function inside of the integrand, you can still use integration by parts. What you think of as the other function is just one. Okay. All right, great. So let's get right into it. We have uh, a shortcut that we'd like to be able to use, but we can't. The shortcut is for when you have a polynomial that's times a trig function or a polynomial that's times an exponential function. We don't have that, but that's okay. We have our hierarchy mnemonic. Who helps us out uh, if there was a log function we would let x equal that uh, u equal that log function in the absence of a log function if there's an inverse trig function we would let u be equal to that inverse trig function so here we are arctan is an inverse trig function i like to write it in the arctan format as opposed to tan to the mi tan minus one um, symbol for inverse um, and so u is equal to the arctan of one over x leaving dv to be officially 1 dx. I didn't put the 1 in there this time, but there's a 1 there. What do you do? Well, we have to take the derivative of u and the integral of 1. And so how are we going to do that? What do we use to take the derivative of the arctan of 1 over x? Well, we need the chain rule. It's a composite function. It's a function inside of a function. We have to remember arctan's derivative because we take the derivative of arctan and we plug in 1 over x. So arctan has as its derivative 1 over 1 plus x squared. But when there's more than just an x inside, you do 1 over 1 plus that function squared. And then you multiply by the derivative of that function. 1 over x is derivative negative 1 over x squared. Just use a power rule and call it x to the negative 1, and then you get negative 1 x to the negative 2. And so watch how this simplifies, though. What we're going to do is multiply the numerator by negative 1, multiply the denominator by x squared. What's going to happen? Well, first off, wait, I'm sorry. Let's, let's uh, square out that 1 over x quantity squared as 1 over x squared. And now let's multiply in. Numerator is going to be a negative 1, and watch what happens with the denominator. You get x squared times 1, and then x squared times 1 over x squared. That gives you a 1. So that is the derivative of u. Negative 1 over x squared plus 1 with a little dx on it. What is the integral of 1? The integral of 1 is x. All right, we're integration by we're doing integration by parts. I don't have the formula on this slide, but it is the integral of um, u dv is equal to the product of u and v minus the integral of v du. So uh, what I normally do is I circle these guys here. So we have u v product, and then we have v du as our new integral product. And there's a double minus there. I don't know if you see it, but um, the minus from the du and the minus from the formula gives us a plus. The integral on u dv is uv minus the integral on v du. Okay, great. So we're trading in our integral for another integral. And the new integral is supposed to be doable. Is it? How do you find the antiderivative of x over x squared plus 1? Let's take a second to think about it. The idea is that the derivative of the denominator is almost an exact copy of the numerator, except for it's off by a constant. And in that case, then, you can just do as u sub. What you do is you let u be equal to the denominator. The derivative of the denominator is 2x dx. What you're looking at is x dx 
So you can solve for it by dividing both sides by two. And then what you'll be looking at then is one over u du with a factor of a half out front. And the antiderivative of one over u is the natural log of u. With that half out front, you can just leave it out there and then re replace u with x squared plus one and you are done with the antiderivative. Now notice once again, I've, I've uh, removed the bounds just to get the entire antiderivative first. And you don't have to do it this way, but that's how I prefer to do it. And now I'm gonna plug in those bounds. I'm gonna put those bounds back in, fundamental theorem of calculus, evaluate at the upper limit and subtract from that what I get from evaluating at the lower limit. Put a root three in. 1 over root 3, arc 10 of that. We have to find out what that is, times the root 3. And then um, when you square root 3, you get a 3. 3 plus 1 is a 4. And so you get half log 4. When you put a 1 in, you're just going to get arc 10 of 1 and half log 2. All right, so what is the arc 10 of 1 over root 3? What angle do you plug into tangent and have it spit out 1 over root 3? Maybe helpful to have a unit circle handy or a chart. Um, this is one of our 30, 60, 90 guys. Um, the sine is a half and the, and the cosine is root three over two. It's gonna be pi over six. And so um, we have half log four and then we have half log two. What about the arc tan of one? What angle do you plug into tangent have a bit of one out? That means sine and cosine have to be the same. So it's gotta be pi over four. Um, we could actually combine the log four and the log two using log properties. Uh, log four minus log two is the, the natural log of four over two. And so that'll be the natural log of two. And that's it. There's nothing really else to do with the root three and the six. You can kind of just leave it like that. Maybe put in the numerator with the pi and you are done. You found the area under that curve from one to root three. Good work. All right, great. Um, thank you for um, watching. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. I'm here to help. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I thought I said it at the beginning, but I didn't. And uh, I operate calcoach.com, putting out videos for you and um, eventually working towards uh, making an entire course, and putting that course somewhere for you to um, be able to learn from. All right. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.